Hello and welcome back to Detox Tube. And I haven't done one of these in a little bit. We're going to do a collection video. And I'm really excited about this episode because we're going to do NES games. Um, now, when I was younger, I had a ton of NES games. We had a ton of NES games, we had a ton of Sega Genesis games, uh, and then we moved into PlayStation and I had a bunch of PlayStation games. And then after that, I started buying my own consoles. But, uh, when I was younger, we definitely sold my collection, um, and I believe it was actually to get a Sega Genesis, but so there was a long period of time where I did not have any physical NES games whatsoever, but uh, since I got a Retron, I decided to start buying a few physical games if it was something I really liked, or if I found it super cheap, just kind of out of nowhere, and so I have a tiny little collection here, and I was going to show off what I have. Um, a lot of these are super nostalgic for me. In fact, uh, just looking at it now, yeah, uh, yeah, they are all, for one reason or another, very nostalgic for me. So we're going to start off really good. Uh, this is a game called Base Wars. So this is the best baseball game, not only on Nintendo like on the Nintendo Entertainment System, on every console ever. Best baseball game. So it's in the future, and all the people playing baseball are robots or cyborgs. And everyone has weapons, and basically you can hit the ball, and if it's not caught as like a fly out or something, you can circle the bases. And if you... the pl um, the fielder throws the ball at any of the bases while you're there it starts this battle sequence and then you can just fight the other guy and beat the crap out of him and then continue on to the next base and just kind of go around if you think your character's strong enough um and if you play season mode uh as the season goes on you get more money so you can buy crazy upgrades like you get guns and there's a laser sword and it's super awesome and it's super fun to play it's very arcadey excellent game um, played this for hours when I was a kid. Uh, this was a game that me and my brother played and uh, yeah, loads and loads of fun. It's also easy to be a super dick when you're pitching because you can slow the ball down really slow and just kind of go Ooh, Ooh. fucking stupid, but I love it. Uh, this one, another sports game. Blades of Steel. So many, many people swear by ice hockey on the NES. Here's the thing. I've played ice hockey in my later years. I never had it as a kid. So as a kid, I had Blades of Steel. And this was a game that me and my brother played a lot. It was it's a hockey game, obviously. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, it even has as a single player and a multiplayer mode like you like other sports games of the time, you could just pick one team and then you would go through the rest of the other teams and if you beat all the teams, you would win the game. You get like a trophy ceremony or something. Um, but uh, but yeah, but the most fun I had was playing with my brother, two player. Cause uh, there's actually this, there's like an infamous glitch in this game where uh, if you're good enough to, at any point in the game, be the first one to score, uh, the game is made super easy afterwards because of the fact that uh, there's some copycat system or programming in the system. So if, say, you got the hockey puck and you return to your defense or anywhere on the, the uh, rink, uh, if you went in a circle, like as close to a circle as you could, the other player would be forced to copy that movement so they would just kind of spin around in a little circle so you could just potentially just continuously circle them and they would never move towards you and you could just run out the periods like that obviously we couldn't do that when we were playing each other because we're not that stupid but uh man playing through the actual like single player game doing that made it super easy but yeah playing against my brother lots of fun uh i wish the fighting came up a bit more but i mean it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Dr. Mario. Say the name before I even put the thing up. Um, so this is a game I actually... Uh, my brother didn't play 
uh, anywhere near as much. He wasn't much of a puzzle gamer, so he didn't really play Dr. Mario. He didn't really play Tetris or any of the other games like that. Um, however, I did play this with someone. My mother was really good at this game. So it was either this or Tetris, uh, we would both go back and forth trying to beat each other's high scores. And for some reason, she was way better at it than I was. So, like, over time, like, I would try and go always catch her high scores and fail all the time. Uh, but yeah, Dr. Mario is super fun. I like it. I like little puzzle games. And, yeah, Dr. Mario and Tetris. Excellent games. Ah, another sports game. So, three out of four. Goal! Uh, my very first soccer game. Now, I've never been the biggest soccer fan. I did play it when I was younger for about six or seven years. Uh, but, um, but yeah, uh, never really watched it on TV when I was growing up. They didn't really cover soccer unless it was the World Cup. And I don't even think we had the MLS at that point. And American soccer really wasn't a thing aside from the Olympics. Um... So yeah, so soccer wasn't something I had any following for. However, I had this game, and it is World Cup based, and I just had a lot of fun with it. It's just a top-down, or is it isometric? Um, just simple soccer game, and it's slow and plodding, like a real soccer game. And uh, yeah, goal's fun. I'm pretty sure I found a copy of that for super cheap, and I'll play it every once in a while. Ah, this one, another one I played a lot with my brother. Karate Champ. Definitely not one of the best games ever. But, it just a very simple fighting game. Uh, one, 1v1 fighting game for the NES that was really slow. And uh, the controls were kind of whack. And, um... I don't know. Uh, and it, there was a, the ref in the background, which is, it was, it was simple mechanics at that time. So you just kind of move back and forth like that across the screen, make, making hand motions. And then uh, if you won a round, oh wait, no, I think if you won two rounds, it had a leveling system where uh, then like the third stage was like a bonus stage and it was like stuff flying at you like flower pots and stuff like that and uh, the controls were not good enough for that sort of thing I I've never been good at Karate Champ and honestly neither was my brother but we had a ton of fun playing it he always just going for the low kick or trying to do a back kick and always ending up turning ourselves the wrong way and then not understanding the controls enough to turn ourselves back the other way so just getting kicked in the back of the head and shit. Good game. Uh, let's see. Is it more sports games? Yeah, it's more sports games. RBI Baseball 3. So RBI Baseball was a series of MLB-sponsored uh, baseball games that had the actual players and statistics and teams for a given year set uh, like a particular season each RBI baseball game was a different season obviously I don't fully maybe there's a date on the back of this I don't see it I want to say it's probably like 1991 or 92 I don't even think like the Marlins and the Rockies were in baseball games yet so it's the original 28 teams um but yeah, so you could, like uh, when I was talking about, what was I talking about? Blades of Steel. You could, obviously it has multiplayer, like you can play against somebody offline. Actually, you can play single player, like exhibition games too. But if you, there's a season mode, essentially, where you pick one team and then it randomly selects other teams out of the other 27. And then as you beat each game, or you have to basically beat each other team and then you win the game so it has a single player mode and essentially um i had a lot of fun with this it's a very good arcade style baseball game there's no if you've ever played like baseball stars or something like that it's it's very much like that it's not as difficult as something like bases loaded which uh the controls were a bit too wonky and tr attempting to be more advanced than they should be for an nes game 
whereas this is just simple arcade stuff and it's super fun uh me and my brother would play this and we would get really good at it but not on the defensive end so there'd be many games where it'd be like both teams in like the 20 run range which isn't a thing in real baseball unless you're crazy but uh but yeah uh, a lot of fun and yeah ah a non-sports game and there's some sort of old blockbuster stickers on the front of it i must have found this at like a tag sale or something snake rattle and roll so this is a uh it's kind of a platformer in if you go by its actual definition but it's not a 2d side scroller um it's maybe this is isometric it basically has the level layout of um, those early 3D Sonic games, like that style. Um, like I'm talking early, early. Like I think Sonic Sonic 3D Blast, and there was another one, but like that sort of stuff. But uh, basically, you're you can play it single player or actually no, I think it always has to be two. And even if you're not playing with a friend, it's like a, a computer character. But basically, uh, you're two snakes, and you're trying to eat pegs, balls, like the same look, the same style thing of like Pac-Man, except it's a three, an actual 3D object. And uh, you go around each area and you're eating up these things and as you eat um i think it's i think it's everyone uh you get another piece of your tail and uh the tail has a couple of different functions um but basically you want to get the tail as long as you possibly can uh so you progress through the level and you basically you're you're going from the start of the level to the end of the level and the whole point I think most of the time, except as I th there's a couple of boss stages, but the whole point, the most of most of the time, is that you want to have weigh enough combined. There's a scale at the end of the level, and you want to weigh enough to open whatever the door is, like the exit door. And if you don't weigh enough, the there's a the bell on the little scale thing won't go off, and so it won't open the door. And uh, there's bonus areas too. The, but yeah, as as I just said, make your have a long snake, sit on the scale, and uh, there's also feet enemies that jump around and try and squish you, and they'll take away most of your uh, tail, if not all of it. So yeah, and uh, you can also get upgrades to the tongue, like he shoots out a tongue, that's how he attacks things, and uh, you can like the longer the tongue is, like you can reach special stuff, like there's. Uh, extra lives and anything like that um but yeah so that's snake round and roll and it was a lot of fun uh we came close to beating it once we made it to the final level but it's a giant foot boss and we couldn't figure out how to do it and it's nes it didn't have a continue system so you'd have to start over i don't think this had a password system but i mean i could be wrong who knows uh another non-sports game actually yeah two out of the last three are sports games so we'll get to those in a sec um, I got these covers. I'm gonna get them out of the way. Star Tropics, the best Zelda game that wasn't a Zelda game. Uh, Star Tropics is delightful. Uh, the story's whatever. Um, it, although I've never beaten the game, and I really should beat the game because I think it has to do with aliens. Um, but uh, but yeah, so you're uh you're a young boy who's a pitcher, and uh, you go on an go to this island to meet your uncle uh, and he lives in like a village and you go to the village and your uncle's not there and everyone says he's um, I don't know if they say he's been kidnapped or he's gone missing or something like that so basically it's this top down really ugly looking uh, open world walking area um, for each section and uh, and I think there's a world map too. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember if the world map is different than the actual map, uh, like the little the little area things. It could be. Um, but anyways, so you go to the different villages, 
and you talk to these people and it's uh, top down and then you basically find whatever clues you need to do in that specific area or if there's a secret exit and uh, you talk to all the people you need to talk to and then you progress and then you find the area you're supposed to go to and that's basically a uh, dungeon. Um, it's like a, it looks like Zelda, except slightly better looking. Like the, the graphics are like, it looks a lot closer to the, uh, the player. Whereas, uh, and plus everyone looks big and, uh, basically, yeah, you go through each dungeon and at the end of each dungeon, like Zelda, there's a boss and then you fight the boss and, uh, then you progress and it has a save system similar to Zelda seeing a lot of, uh, repeated things here so anyways um so yeah i've beaten maybe four or five levels of this game but it starts getting really hard like zelda and uh, i've just never made it further i think i still have a save file either on this or on um might be an emulator it's either an emulator or it's available on the NES emulator on Switch. I could be wrong, but it's somewhere. I have a save file, and I've made it a little ways into it. Maybe one day I'll beat it. I say that about a lot of games, but uh, we'll see. All right, more sports. I know that's what you're here for. Tecmo NBA basketball. Um, so when I was younger, I had um, I had games like Double Dribble and arch rivals and hoops and then there was bird versus jordan which was actually a lot of fun um and uh, i had all those games and i was like these are fun but i really wish i could play with like the actual players in the league and all that sort of stuff and the real teams and all sort. that's where this game comes in so this is to my knowledge the only game on the nes that has the likeness of all the um, NBA teams. And this is also pre... No, Hornets... Hornets were in this? Hornets might not have even been in this. I think the Heat was. Uh, I don't remember. I know the Raptors and the Grizzlies are not. But anyways, so you could do... Uh, also, unlike most games at this time, you could do a full season. Like, you could play all 82 games, and then the playoffs, if you make it into the playoffs, and then the NBA Finals. Um, and you could play as any team. And you could adjust the lineup with the actual players. And uh, you could set plays, which I never fully understand. I understood how to do, because it's basketball, just... I. I guess you would set up whatever positioning you want your players to be in when you get down the court or when you're on defense, but I never did that. Um, but yeah, uh, this was a game I did play with my brother, but he didn't play it as much. Um, neither of us were particularly good at it. The controls aren't that smooth. They fixed them a lot on uh, Tecmo Super NBA Basketball and the Super Nintendo, but in this one, they are a little rough. It's a little difficult to really understand how you're getting shots in and how you're not getting shots in how you're blocking people and how you're not blocking people what's a steal attempt what's a foul it it's a bit eh but for being a i i was a stats nerd so i would just sometimes just simulate a season without being on any team and then just kind of change our lineups as the season went on to try and make them better or worse and uh i would do that a lot but as far as the actual game goes wasn't particularly great at it this one though this is hmm best football game ever tecmo super bowl hell yeah uh so tecmo bowl is cool this game is way better so like Tecmo NBA basketball, this has the licenses for every team, and this was before the Panthers and the Jaguars started. So once again, 28, te 28 teams? I think it's 28 teams. Um, and uh, this one, you could as well adjust the plays. That one made a 
that made a lot more sense in this game uh, because each you're constantly picking plays and that's what you would do and it was a time or turn based sort of game so I mean that's what football is um, but this this I was really good at and there was actually it still has a pretty strong audience to the fact that they still do tournaments around the US I've been to one and I got stopped uh, but yeah they have tournaments around the US with all these people who have been playing for mostly for years like since we were kids and uh, everyone gets they get like trophies and there's prizes and stuff like that um, and there was uh, there might still be but there definitely was a online circuit for a little while um, it was uh, it had its own website and you could log in and uh, connect with other players and uh, basically play each other online in a Nintendo game and uh, it would keep track of your stats as well so you could send the stat file back to the website and then it would keep give, make a profile and it would show all the games you played and all the stats within them and I'm pretty sure I played 30 games and won maybe three I very outclassed um, that's what I get for only usually beating being able to beat the computer instead of being one of those people who can beat them like 90 to nothing anytime you play them um, but yeah I love Tecmo Super Bowl it's so fun and I love the OP characters in the game like there's certain people whose speed levels are way they, they're broken like Bo Jackson on the Raiders or um, Barry Sanders on the Lions there's a couple of wide receivers who are like that uh uh, Randall Cunningham on the Eagles is ridiculous. Uh, there's a uh, Christian Okoye on the Chiefs, and I believe there's one more. I'm not. Um, who am I thinking of? I know both Thurman Thomas on the Bills and uh, Emmett Smith on the Cowboys are pretty good, but I, f I feel there's somebody else who's just super fat. Maybe the 49ers guy. Uh. Mm. Or maybe the Giants guy. I can't can't remember what I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, yeah, there's OP players, and um, this game is ridiculously fun. I This is my favorite sports game of all time. They can make, until like I'm playing like VR Madden, and I feel like I'm actually playing, and it's super smooth and fun, this is going to be my favorite sports game of all time. So, Tecmo Super Bowl. It's excellent. Now... We talked about this game a little bit earlier by comparison to another game, The Legend of Zelda. Uh, so yeah, this is this is Zelda. What do I really need to say about this? Um, I've never beaten this game, just like Star Tropics, except I made it a little further in this one. I believe I beat five or six of the dungeons, but I couldn't beat the last ones. It's also one of the first games that like truly confused me as a child I didn't like cuz you're supposed to I'm not supposed to you are uh, you're picking up clues throughout the map and learning lore to try and figure out how to get to certain areas cuz they're not like not everything in the world is black and white it's not super easy to pinpoint where you need to go all the time and, uh, yeah, I, at that point, I can't think of another game that I had where I did that. Like, I didn't have to do, like, problem solving in, uh, fucking Super Mario. Like, it, like, you move to the next level. Zelda wasn't like that. Like, it lets you, it, uh, it's pretty easy to find the first two or three dungeons, I think. Um... And then, but then after that, it's like, yeah, no hand holding. Go find the clues. Do you want to know where all the secrets are? To, uh, oh, and each dungeon usually has a secret tool that you can collect. Like there's a there's a raft that you can only get to a suit. Um, there's a few places that you can only get to with the raft. So if you don't pick it up in the dungeon that you need to. Like, if you don't explore every dungeon until you find all the items you need to find, uh, you're going to be going back through that dungeon again. Lots of fun. 
So yeah, there's certain things that you need to progress in the game, and they don't tell you when you go in. It's like, you might do the first three dungeons, not find an extra thing anywhere, and then go to all these areas, and you're like, wait, why do I need a ladder? Why do I need a boat? Oh, where are these? And then, yeah, so it's convoluted. It's hard for a hard as a kid if you don't like have the big map that comes with it or like a proper instruction guide. So, um, so yeah, I've never beaten it, but Zelda's a lot of fun, and uh, it was my favorite Zelda game for many years. Um, I've kind of dabbled in most of them at least a little bit, but uh, Zelda Two is interesting, but not great. Uh, Link to the Past is good, um, and uh, I don't know. I kind of played it really late because I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up. But uh, Link to the Past is good, but like, I, it's kind of overrated to me because of how many people call it their favorite game. Um, I still think it's good, and I thought A Link Between Worlds was neat with the the photo thing. Um, but honestly, I think my favorite is Breath of the Wild, and I think that opinion is becoming more common. Breath of the Wild is amazing, and I cannot wait for the second one. But yeah, Breath of the Wild is my favorite now. This is really good, though. Really hard, though. Uh, last time I tried playing this, I just kept getting my ass kicked trying to get through these dungeons. And, like, it's super hard to um, kind of go through without getting dismantled and then if you don't if you're not perfect health you don't get to fire the wep, uh, the bolt out of your sword and uh, yeah you only get um, I can't remember if you can buy hearts like more life or if that's just a thing you get every time you get a piece of the Triforce but, um, but yeah that becomes uh, problematic very quickly when you start going into dungeons and you only have like three hearts you're like okay I can get hit six times and I'm done all right better be careful and um, yeah Legend of Zelda is great but yeah so that is it for my NES collection and uh, we'll be back next time with a different video game collection at some point take care